Now in chapter 6 we are going to move to ranked retrieval and we are going to look at a model for information retrieval that is going to be different from the boolean retrieval model that we have been considering so far. The new model that we are going to look at is called ranked retrieval and this is a, a, a model that's closer to what real world search engines use because in the boolean retrieval model the semantics of a boolean query was such that either a document matches the query or it doesn't match the query. Right? There was no uh, gradation of matching. Either a document matches the query or it doesn't match depending on whether or not it satisfies that boolean expression or not. The problem with uh, boolean query was that the, the, the problem with the boolean retrieval model in general was that it's not something that the majority of users would find useful. It was useful for more sophisticated users. We saw the example of lawyers at Westlaw who have a precise understanding of their needs and they can express that precise understanding in the form of a boolean query but we can't expect ordinary users uh, to be capable of writing such long and precise boolean queries. The other thing with boolean retrieval is that it may be good for applications which consume the results of a search index. So in other words if, if the results of of, of, of of a query are not going to be consumed by a human but are going to be consumed by an application, then this kind of a model may work because applications can automatically parse thousands and thousands of results. But if you are going to return the, uh, such results to a human user, then the problem is that if you have thousands of results in, uh, in your uh, uh, FOIA query, the users can't be expected to wade through so many results. And that's particularly true of web search where users don't have that patience to uh, look beyond the first 10 or 20 documents. And this is where ranking becomes useful because if you're going to be returning results that are uh, thousands or, or millions of documents long uh, as we saw for some queries in past lectures, it's very important to be able to rank those documents relative to the query so that the users can find the most uh, relevant documents or the documents that match the query most closely at the very top so that they don't have to consume so many results. They can just look at uh, hopefully the most important results. So just to elaborate on a couple of points, one of the problems with Boolean search is that either you have these thousands of results or you get this other extreme where you end up with too few results. So if you recall how do, how do lawyers at Westlaw use Boolean queries? They start off with a short query and for a very short query you can expect the results to be very large in number because your query may not be precise to start with. And then when you get too many results, more than what you can actually parse, you could add some more terms to your query and elongate your query to make it more precise. And that would hopefully cut down the results, the number of results that you're getting. But what often happens is that as you start making your query longer and longer, the number of results does decline, but it can often suddenly drop to zero when you elongate a query further beyond a certain point. Right? For example, here's a query standard user dealing 650. This would, re at, su at some point, a few years ago at least, this was yielding about 200,000 hits on a typical search engine. Whereas if you add this phrase no card found, it yields zero hits. Okay, so uh, 
the problem with boolean search here is that you either get a feast of results or a famine of results okay if your query is too short you may get too many results that you can handle and if your query is too long then you may get too few results and it takes a lot of skill to come up with a precise boolean query that will return a manageable number of hits just enough that you can pass through okay so or queries in general tend to give too many results and long conjunctive queries tend to give few results so we need some kind of a trade off or, or or we need to make life easier in that we want to be able to match query match the query with documents even if the match is not totally precise in case of boolean queries either a document matches the query or it doesn't match the query now what happens in a in an actual search engine is that instead of using boolean queries users type in free text queries it's very uncommon to find people typing in a boolean query on google usually they will just type in a set of words and this kind of query is called a free text query because those set of words don't necessarily specify any kind of a boolean operation right for example i could write a a query like india capital okay i may intend to uh, get information about the capital of india but i can write a free text query like this and i need documents talking about the capital of india but i can express it in this way in a free as a free text query so rather than this query being in a particular query language a boolean query language where we use terms and then connect them using operators the query is just one or more words in a human language and rather than a particular document exactly satisfying this query or not satisfying this query in rank retrieval in 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 the rank retrieval model we are going to return a list of documents such that the documents at the top match the query better than documents further below in the list so there is a gradation in the quality of the match it's not like a binary case where either a document matches or it doesn't match there is a gradation of the quality of match if some documents may match the query better than other documents and there is a uh, uh, there is a continuous notion of how good a match is one can assign a score to a given document and say that documents with a higher score match the query better right so rank retrieval has normally been associated with free text queries i mean you can think of free text queries being combined with the boolean retrieval model instead of boolean queries right so we had boolean retrieval model where uh, either a document matches the query or it doesn't match and that's associated with boolean queries and typically the rank retrieval model is associated with free text queries and i hope you can see that this is the kind of model that is employed in uh search engines okay so it's not common to have rank retrieval associated with boolean queries or boolean retrieval associated with free text queries this is uh, how things go together now we don't get this feast or famine problem in rank retrieval because even if the result set is very large it's not a problem because your documents are ranked in decreasing order of uh proximity to the query or relevance to the query and we can always just show the top 10 results like google does we don't have to bombard the user with thousands and thousands of results 
and that too in a scrambled order as in Boolean retrieval, we can rank the uh, list of documents. So the user doesn't get overwhelmed. And this of course assume that we have a good ranking algorithm. So how do we build such a system? Now we want to return documents in decreasing order of some score, a decreasing order of relevance to the user which we are going to try to quantify as a score. Okay, So we are going to order the documents, we are going to rank order the documents with respect to a query by coming up with some kind of a score for every document. And this score will be in the range of 0 to 1. So 0 indicates a, a, a no match whereas a score of 1 indicates the best quality match. And the score will in general be a real number between 0 and 1. So a higher score would mean that the document is closer to the query. So this continuous score is going to measure how well the document and query match. Okay, so again the idea of a match in rank retrieval is not binary it's continuous. Okay, so you can have one document matching a query better than another document. Something that you didn't have in Boolean retrieval. So how do we assign such a score? Let's try to think about how we can come up, how we can define such a score between a query and a document. So let's start with a simple example where we have a one term query. Okay, let's say the query is India. Now suppose this query term does not occur in the document. Okay, so we are comparing uh, this query with every single document in the corpus and we are looking at one particular document. Let's say document I. Now suppose this query term India does not occur in that document. Then we are going to say that the score should be a zero. That is, there is no match between the query and the document. Now, if the word India occurs in the document, then we are going to look at how many times it occurs in the document. And the idea is that if it occurs a large number of times in the document, then that document is more important than another document where it may occur only once. So the more frequently a query term occurs in the document, we are going to make the score higher. That's how we are going to try to define this score. Okay, and there are a number of ways to, def to, to come up with such a score which satisfy this condition. That is, when there is no match, the, the value of the score is zero and uh, the, 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 mo the, the more number of times the, the query term occurs in the document, the higher the score is. Okay, so 